Okay, now I want to cover a game between Alekin and Poindol played in Vienna in 1936. The opening is, is the Roy Lopez Berlin defense, um, ECO code C67. Um, Alekin was white and Poindol was black, so the game started out by E4, E5, Knight F3, Knight C6, Bishop to B5, so we have the Roy Lopez, and then uh, Poindol is black plays knight f6 and then we have what I call the normal continuation for some for some moves in the uh, in the Berlin defense white plays on its fourth move um, castles black plays knight takes e4 and then um, white on its fifth move plays d5 the other move that's um, played is rook to e1 but here white on its fifth move plays um, d4, black plays knight to uh, d6, and then normally in the Berlin defense you get uh, uh, this line. So normally uh, white would play on its sixth move, sixth move, uh, bishop takes c6, and then uh, d takes c6, uh, d takes e5 forcing the knight to move. The knight usually comes to uh, f5. Then the queens are exchanged off. That's uh, sort of typical for the Berlin defense. But um, on uh, white's sixth move, instead of playing bishop takes uh, c6, uh, white plays d takes e5. Um, almost looks like uh, black can win the bishop here because you just say, wow, you know, uh, well, white just got his pawn back, but it just left the bishop in take. What happens here, though, is that after um, black takes the knight, which it does in the game, white on its seventh move will play um, a4. Now, look, the knight actually has really nowhere to go. If you look at the knight moves without being taken... So what is uh, black to do? Well, uh, in the game, uh, black plays the knight back to d6, but an interesting continuation would be where um, black plays d6, and then uh, play might continue. Um, this is just an example of play. Um, a takes uh, b5. And then the knight takes, so black is actually up a pawn, but what white gets back is it can keep this pressure on the e-file because now this knight uh, can get pinned. So uh, white may play queen to e2, pinning the knight. And then uh, and it's actually winning. Pino you know, is starting to win back the pawn by knight takes, pawn takes, and then queen takes pawn with check. So black play can play the bishop to g4. White may play the queen to e4, and then um, black would take the knight, and then to keep the pressure on, white could play g takes f3. And then now black plays queen to c8 because this pawn over here was in take, and then um, white could keep up the pressure by playing bishop to f4. That's just an example continuation, sort of a long line from there, but just to show you something else can, that can actually go on. That didn't happen in the game. Instead, after uh, a4, white's seventh move, a4, uh, black actually played the uh, knight back to d6, and then uh, white took the knight, needs to get its uh, material back, and then black takes with the bishop. No other good move. Black could take with the pawn, but that would just, you know, cr create um, isolated and double pawns. Not a very good thing. So black took with the bishop, but now that prevents the d pawn from moving. So um, you can tell that. Uh, look at black. The king's on open file, and its pieces. Uh, it's, you know, this bishop is sort of him then. You know, this pawn, this bishop can move, this can move, this needs to move. So, you know, uh, not not too good. And uh, maybe I should have said at the beginning of this game is that I was going to theme this game, um, 
you know, hey, don't move that knight. So don't move that knight because if you if we back up a bit, and I I hate to do this, but uh, going to this point when Black took this bishop, look how many times this knight moved. This knight move, this knight here move to capture this bishop and moved here first, took this pawn, moved back to here, and then it's going to move here. Four moves to capture the bishop, which only moved once. So that means uh, that many moves means loss of time for black. So just moving forward. So coming back to d6, take, take. So effectively, um, black is... Um, behind in time and white's going to use this as a uh, as an opportunity opportunity to attack black now it isn't going to win the game outright but uh, Alekhinov um, goes about uh, creating a weakness in black's pawn structure that um, he can use to infiltrate the black's position and how he does this is playing knight to g5 and it doesn't really look like anything. When I first saw it, I wasn't too sure of the move. Why is the knight moving forward again? It's not really attacking anything. But that's the reason why uh, Alekhine is a grandmaster and world champion, and I'm not. Um, one of the things is is that if black does a normal move on its ninth move, like castle, then uh, white will play something like queen the d3, forcing black to play um, g6, weakening the pawn structure, which is what white wants so it can attack the king. But that isn't what was played. Instead, black played the uh, the bishop back d7, so double attack on the knight, getting out in front of the d-pawn so it can move the d-pawn. Looks like multi-purpose move, doesn't look bad. But now white plays queen to h5, threatening mate. And um, it's going to force a pawn weakness. It's actually going to force black to make the move g6. But what looks tempting right here is for black to actually play bishop takes g5. But this does not work due to the fact that white can now play bishop takes g5. And now uh, um, black's going to play knight to e7. And then white will play rook to e1. What end up happening is that obviously this knight can't move, and uh, you know the next move, um, White's going to take the knight. The um, it's going to win the knight, so it's going to win material. Or if the queen takes back, White gets a queen in exchange for a rook. So White's going to win some material if Black decides to take the knight. So instead, Black plays uh, g6 now. White has accomplished one of its goals. It's uh, weakened the king's side, and it's going to allow um, the opportunity to infiltrate the position. So the queen's going to come up here and uh, um, to uh, h6, where it stops black from castling. But it's also threatening the queen's threatening to come here, where where it will attack the rook. So. Black played bishop to f8, but once let's back up again and look at the move that looks somewhat obvious of uh, bishop takes g5. But this actually leads to um, a checkmate, or if it doesn't lead the checkmate, it's going to lead the, uh, an awful position for Black, a very losing position. If Black decides to take the knight on g5, then White plays bishop takes g5, f6. Then the queen comes in. This rook comes over. Check. The knight comes back to uh, block. Bishop comes back, threatening. Now white's threatening checkmate on f8. The rook comes up, but then the queen just gives check, and then it's over. So obviously black cannot take the the knight. So instead, black plays the bishop back, saying, hey, get out of there. And now, white plays rook to e1 check, which forces the knight to come back. 
not advisable as moving the bishop there, because that way the queen can just go to g to g7. And now white plays um, knight d4, threatening checkmate in more ways than one. So threatening, actually threatening checkmate on the move, and then and black should not be tempted to take the queen. The queen is very poisoned because it leads to a checkmate. Let's say black took the queen, then then uh, white gives check. The uh, king moves over and checkmate. So black can't take the queen. So white has moved on its 13th move, has made has moved the knight to e4, and the only saving move for black is f5. 